Okay, we are now up to module five, creating an audio story. I don't know what it is about audio. I've been doing this sort of thing for, golly, over 20 years um, with kids. And one of the things I think has so intrigued me is that the idea of storytelling is, a, is, a, is as old as human beings have been around. This is how we first developed knowledge and passed it on. We told stories around the tribal campground. We taught around campfires. And I have done many, many, many teachings around a campfire. So it has always just rang in my head to the power of the audio story. Does this fit within the mayor universe? I think it does. I think if you think about what we're trying to do with an audio story is we're trying to paint a visual picture through the use of sound. And if you think about what Mayer has to say about redundancy, about mod modality, all those pieces where he talks about you can't have things that bombard one sense sensory input over another. You can't, as I say, cross the streams. So if you have sounds in your story that are sounds that take away from the story or if they're, they don't fit, then the story falls apart. Simple as that. Now, sometimes the use of a sound that doesn't seem to fit is appropriate because it's trying to raise the idea of something is really wrong here. It's a fascinating media. And what's really interesting is uh, I still do it. I still work with the uh, state student technology leadership program. And I, I do the podcasting uh, competition that is done um, as STLP. And I think podcasting and I became friends when it started. And then it kind of went away. And it kind of went away because of the growth and onslaught, on, onslaught excuse me, of YouTube because we're such a visual culture. But then with programs like This American Life, podcasts came back. The idea of people having conversations or the idea of people telling stories. And oh my goodness, do we even need to mention Audible? So this idea of creating a story, I think still resonates. I think it still has meaning. And what we're asking you to do with this is we're gonna be using a app called Soundation. You will be using my account to log in to the Soundation. And I want to stress to you that if you want to use the Soundation, uh, site with your kids, oh, please feel, feel, feel free to let them play in here. Now, some people have looked at the foundation stuff and they go, well, this looks just like GarageBand, Steve. Well, yeah, it is. It's GarageBand online. So if you are a Mac user and you're more comfortable with using GarageBand, please feel free. Feel free. You don't have to use the foundation. I just give you access to the foundation because I find that it's a very simple app to use uh, and a very powerful one. And I'm going to show you how to use it here in just a bit. And um, some, when I do this, uh, I'll be gearing up here in November to do uh, Google Hangouts where I basically invite anybody in from the state of Kentucky who is an STLP member to join us. And I'll explain podcasting and all the different ways you can do it. The competition now, we, we include uh, YouTube channels because, well, that's what kids like to do these days, and that's fine. Um, but then we talk about things like SoundCloud, 
which um, I can turn on. I don't have it turned on in this in this module. If you're interested and you want to look at something like SoundCloud, just you know, yell at me. Uh, send me a text. Turn it on. You can climb around in it and see what it looks like. But let's look at at the setup here. What we're asking you to do is to create a audio story with a topic of resiliency. And I'm asking you to record, develop a story about a time in your teaching career when you overcame adversity to help you discover a new truth about yourself. We are asking you to create an audio drama. Uh, this can be just a story. In other words, you telling the story. But when I say a visual picture, the reason why I'm, I'm using that term is you're going to need to use other things other than your voice. And I'll show you that. We have access to uh, sound, uh, in other words, sound effects. We also have access to free music. Uh, all of this is license free, copyright free, uh, and so feel free <laughs> to use it. Your final will be, in other words, your final product will be an MP3 file. And you will then download that MP3 file and then turn around and upload that MP3 file to the wiki page that you will have created called Resiliency. And then, of course, like we've done everything else, um, you will copy the URL of where that page is in your wiki and you'll paste that into the assignment in here. Okay. Um, oh, last thought. If this turns you on, if you think this is something you'd like to do with your kids in your class, as I said, please feel free to let them use Soundation or SoundCloud. Um, I have done this with uh, schools where they have uploaded them into their Google Classroom because obviously it's a file. And it's very simple to upload the file. I have also done it with schools that have used... Um, have wanted to create a podcast structure. Um, and of course, as I said, I do training on that with any school in the state of Kentucky. Uh, I've already done what, Steve, have you done three? I've done three already this year. Um, some as far away as Eastern Kentucky, some up Northeast in like Ashland. So if you're interested in this kind of thing with your kids, again, give me a holler. I'll help you set it all up. Let's go in and look at our resources, and then we'll come back and actually launch this thing and get it going. So here is a complete, uh, if you want to do this with your kids, here's everything you need to know about how to do an audio drama. Uh, I have done this with several schools uh, where kids have worked in groups, and they have written scripts, recorded stories, and then posted them. Telling stories as a series is one of the most powerful things you can do with kids. And again, as I have said, I have alluded to this with Mayer in the sense that some of his principles, if not all, I think fit very nicely with the whole idea of telling audio stories. This is what we're going to use, this thing called Soundation. Uh, the link in here, it basically, here's the tutorial. I'm going to kind of go through that with you. Um, it shows you how to enter clips, put, put the stuff in. So if you want to add music, add sound effects, how all that works. I'll show you how to do it here in a minute. Here's the Soundation Studio. This is the link that will take you in. There's also a link in the setup in the module. Here's where the free sound effects live. I'll show you how that works. Here's where the music is. There's also music inside of Soundation. But if you want to get really fancy, there's some really good music in here. Uh, this Josh Woodward stuff is, whoa, it's got some really nice music in there. Okay. And here is a pace site for uh, sound effects. Again, you're more than welcome to use my login uh, to get into it, to play around. Uh, SoundJ is probably the biggest site that's out there that has uh, free sound effects. And I'll show you how all this works in just a second. So let's get the Soundation Studio. 
So when you get to Foundation Studio, you're going to log in as me at sbswan02 at louisville.edu with a password of all lowercase letters, U-L-I-T, 241, all one, all one uh, password, no spaces, U-L-I-T, 241, the numbers 241, U-L-I-T, the numbers 241. You're going to log in, and it takes you to their home page. Uh, as you can see, there's my smiling little face up there. You want to go to their studio. And it takes it a second for it to load. And then it shows you these templates. Now, Foundation is all about uh, creating, it's, it's claim to fame is it's used to create uh, music. And it's pretty good music you can create here, as you can see. So you can use these templates, or you can just click and get them out of the way. Look over here, this is where your tracks live, okay? This is where you actually do the organizing and recording. Over here is your sound library. Now, what I would suggest you do is just click on where it says browse all sounds, get a sense for what's in here, because to me, this is where you can go and find the music or the setup sound for what you're wanting to do with your story. So like if I come up here and I click on one of these, you can't hear it because I don't, I, I can't get the, the Chrome to actually play through to where it records. But this, these are making, uh, this is making music. We're well, not making music, it's recording what are called loops. And you can kind of hear them. Some of these, you don't even need to hunt for music. Keep scrolling down through here. And you see a lot of these are very, very much just sounds. Uh, but if you keep going down through here, there's some in here that you can actually use as beginnings because you need to have a beginning sound, a beginning sort of intro music to what you want to create. And they're all in here. Oh, my goodness. There's more stuff in here. Yeah, it's good stuff. But here's how I set it up. Down here is where I can record. And then I can listen. I can scroll back and forth. This is the scrubber. Classic setup here. And then over here is your setups for your sound. You can actually do a stereo uh, if you want to. You can you can mute the channel, which you probably won't want to do. Uh, and then here's your volume. And you can up and down your volumes within the track itself. And I'll show you how that works here in just a second. So let me just jump down here. If I click on here, I'm now recording. I'm going to come over here and say I'm going to record in this area. And I'm going to double click and I'm going to go, I am now recording. And I'm talking and as you can see, as it comes across here, it'll show me that it's recording across the line. I'll talk and talk and talk. One day there was this wonderful story that happened to me at school. And then when I'm ready to and I want to stop, I just hit the stop and there's the wave. So. I have the ability now, I can go back and drag it back, and I can now listen to what I just said. And I'm talking, and as you can see, as it comes across here, it'll show me that it's recording across the line. I'll talk and talk and talk. One day there was this wonderful story that happened to me at school. And then when I'm ready to... Okay, so I have, I can now have, this is now my recording. I would do my story first, and then I can start adding in the bits and pieces. To add the bits and pieces, all I have to do is just grab and drag it in. So this is the sound that I'm going to use to start my story. So I'm going to move by just grabbing it. I'm going to move this over because this is where I start talking. And what I want it to do is to, I want it to, um, start the sound 
the intro sound and then start my talking. So I'll go ahead. It's asking me if I want to change the tempo, et cetera. No, I'm not so sure I do. So I'm going to go ahead and say no. Now, if I want to go back and listen to how all this sounds together, I can go back to here and I can now play it. And I'm talking, and as you can see, as it comes across here, okay. to me, this is almost magical. <laughs> to take a sound, and I'm not sure if you could hear that sound. I'm sure you can hear me, because I can hear it coming through the speakers here. But to me, the magic of all this is the fact that this music already has set up a feeling that something interesting is about to happen and then I'm telling the story okay so how do we put in now sound effects if we want to have one so I can jump back into my content area here and I can either go in as Stevie Swan into this free sound thing or I can go to sound J this is where there's some good sound effects I can go to background sounds if it's what I'm looking for uh, let's see, what do we have here? Well, it's, you, you can click on these and hear what they sound like, obviously. Okay. Oh, look, this is kind of a kid's playing sound. So this kind of sounds like maybe a school. Or it, I've, it may be a lounge, maybe in the teacher's lounge, and my story takes place in there. Okay, let's go ahead and play with that. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here to where it says download the MP3. And now it's basically saying, what do you want to do with this? I'm going to go ahead and throw it into the 690 recordings folder I have. You know how to do this. I don't have to teach you how to do this. You can put it on your desktop, folder, whatever you want to do. So I'll go ahead and save it into there. Now I'm going to go back into my foundation and I'm going to go to imported sounds and I'm going to go to uploads and I'm going to want to upload that sound into my little music thing or my little story that I'm creating here. Now, I can import an audio file. And now I got to go find it. Oh, look, there it is. So I'm going to open that. And where it should put it is over here. Sometimes you have to hunt a little bit for it. There it is. Looks like it created a, a little folder here from, I don't really know what that is, but make sure we got that. So we would go download the file, come back over here, import the audio file, not a MIDI file, but an audio file. And then it brings it in here into imported sounds and it looks like it created a whole new folder. Okay, here I go. I'm going to drag that in. Now, this is the part that we can show you some of the things here. We can change. We can change the audio by turning it on. Did you see what I did? I came in here and I turned on the audio. And so I can now go up and down with my audio if it's too loud, or I might want to bring it up or down. So what I did is I turned on the audio by coming over here, and now I can bring the sound levels up and down. And if I want the whole thing, that's fine, or I can go in and I can change it to go up and down depending upon where I might want that sound to be. Same thing up here. If I want my sound 
my sound recording to drop down as it gets closer to my voice coming in. You notice I click once, but then I click tw again and I get another little box that lets me come in and to drop that sound level. Okay. And then, of course, if I want to do the same thing up here, I can come in and again, I can do the same trick. I come in here and then I have my storyline or my story come up. So as you can see now, I've got all this in play to help with how the story, how the sounds help paint this picture. Come back here, turn it on. Let's see what we've got. And I'm talking, and as you can see, as it comes across here, it'll show me that it's recording across the line. I'll talk and talk and talk. One day there was this wonderful story that happened to me at school. And then when I... Okay. So as you can see, what happened there was I'm setting up what this story could be about. So maybe, and by the way, I think if I were doing this for real, I might bring this sound up a little bit just to emphasize the fact that this up here where I was talking, I would say one day when I was sitting in the lounge at school, uh, we, da, 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 you know, okay. So how many tracks are here? Whoa, ho, 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 you know, you, you could go really kind of nutsy. Oh, by the way, look, it uploaded the track actually into the um, foundation. Okay, fine. I don't know why I put it way down there. But as you can see, you have room galore to put in more tracks, more sounds, and then play around with how they work. How do I get it out of here? Well, you know how to get it out of here. We're going to go back to the file. We are going to export audio. If I want it to be a high-res MP3, in other words, if, it, if you really want to show off, <laughs> you can do that. The, what the low-res MP3 will do, basically, is it makes the file smaller. That's all. Uh, and, you know, if you need it to be a, a WAV file, which you don't need to for um, PBWorks, I think. I tell you what, we better check all this. So we'll... We'll go ahead and make it a low-res MP3 file just to make sure. Uh, and I'm going to export it. And so, of course, what it's going to do now is it's going to process it out. And give me the same thing. It's going to ask me what I want to do. I'm going to say Steve Story. I'll go ahead and put it in that same folder that I was just working out of. And I'll save it. So let's go over to the PB Works. And I'm going to create a new page. And I'm going to call it uh, I'm not sure if I spelled that right. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and create the page. Boom. You know how all this works. I'm going to go back to my wiki. I'm going to come over here and find my page that I just made. Go into it. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to come over here to add images and files. I'm going to upload a file. And there's my MP3. So I'm going to upload that. And then I'm going to put it in. There it is. And then, I, of course, I'll uh, the uh, assignment ask you to put a paragraph three to five sentences explaining to me your story. I'll go ahead and save that. And there it is. And when I go to play it, 
Ah, see? Good. Well, so we have a problem with the size that it will allow us to have. So why don't we do this? Let's go back into here. Let's export that audio file. Um, and this time, I think I better export it as a WAV file just to be on the safe side. Let's try a WAV and see what we if we can export that. So let's go ahead and do Steve story again. And we'll save that as a wave file. Now I'm going to come back over here. And I will Well, I can do the download. Huh. Let's see what happens when I do the download. Ah, my bad. And I'm talking, and as you can see, as it comes across here, it'll show me that it's recording across the line. Okay. But you know what? Why don't we go ahead and make sure and let's let's make sure everything is good so let's see let me let me go back to my page and let's upload that um file again this time let's upload it as a wave file and see what it's doing here is it it won't play it on the page but it will play it in the download so that's fine but I want to be able to see if it'll play it actually on the page because I think that'd be kind of cool, don't you? So let's go and upload a file again. Turn on my edit. Thank you very much. And images and files. Upload the file. Let's go find it. There's my wave. Open it. And I think we're already in trouble just based upon how long it took that to upload. Goodness gracious. So let's see. Let's find that. And let's put that in. Okay, so the same problem. It's doing the same thing to us, and that's fine. You know, uh, because we know that we just click on that Downloads tab, and it will play it. Now, to wrap up, let's go back and look. What we were doing this week is we're creating an audio story. We're going to be using an online tool called Soundation, which, yeah, I get excited about Soundation. It's very simple to do. Remember, the best order that I can give you is that you, I'm going to turn all these displays off, that you do the story first, record your story first. Then you can come back and add the music, the sound effects, move everything around on the screen so they all kind of fit together. You know, one of the cool things I could have done was move that over a little bit so as... Yes, I do. So that when this starts to go down in sound, this comes up in sound. It's a cool effect. And then down here, I have an effect of a sound effect that was a part of the background of my telling my story. So on, so on, and so on. Simple. This is a great example of a tool that is so simple to use that it melts away and what you're wanting to do with the tool stands 
clearly to the front. Um, I actually like this better than GarageBand, to be quite frank with you, because I think that everything's so obvious. You know, over here, if you want to play with the sound levels, you just come in here and you click on that. What is pan, you might want to ask me? Pan is nothing more than where you want the whole thing to operate from. Um, and, and, you know, if you want to play with that, you go right ahead. This other one is you can turn off things. You know, however you want to do it. Play. Have fun. This is so easy to work with. Oh, I forgot about the effects. Yeah, you can add effects. So if you want to sound like your voice is in an echo chamber, um, hit the reverb. <laughs> and, you know, it just gets cool. Um, here's your presets. You can play with how long you want it to last. You know what? I don't, I don't really play with it that much. I just leave it alone. Well, now I might go in here if you want to add some other stuff. Okay. So there's my reverb that I've added to my amazing um, voice now. So I can go in here and turn that off. Let's see what it sounds like. If you can hear it. And I'm talking, and as you can see, <laughs> as it comes across here, it'll show me that it's recording across the line. I'll talk and talk and talk. I hope you can hear that. <laughs> Because <laughs> it does. It sounds like I'm inside a cave. Uh, since that's where those are. Here are your sound effects over here. Uh, yeah. Play. Have fun. And then when we got done with it all, or if we wanted to add more stuff, we went back to our content. We could go to these various um, sites. The music one, this Josh Woodward one, when we've done this before, we love the Josh Woodward stuff. Listen to the music. You know, he's got some good stuff in here. So if if I've got a story about something. Okay. He's just got good music in here. But you don't have to use his. There's plenty of other stuff in here. Um, and obviously, the whole trick of this is you find the music you like, and then you just download it, and then turn around, and then you import the audio into your wonderful creation over here by going to Import Audio. Find it, bring it in, add it into your creation, smoosh it around so that it fits. It'll always do this, by the way, because it's like, are you sure you're doing it? Notice, by the way, that this is a pretty long sound effect. I should have looked at that. So how do I, well, Steve, what do I do? It's going to keep going. No, just come to the end of it. And you can grab it and you can just drag it back so it is as long or as short as you want it to be. Okay. Make sure you notice that because it'll throw, it throws kids because they'll, they'll accidentally leave the sound effect in. Um, and then it just keeps going after they're through using it. There we go. I just slide that up. Um, and then, of course, when it's all said and done. When it's all said and done, you come back up to your file and you export it as an audio file. We've, we realize now that waves just won't show up. They won't work. So, but it looks like the P, PB works likes either one of these. It just plays them uh, on a different screen. That's it. I think uh, we are going to be close to finishing up here pretty soon. Uh, one of the things that um, I really, really enjoy about all this is I hope that as you're working through this, you're realizing 
why stuff like this works. And if you think about what we've learned from Mayer about how this modality business, about understanding that when we hear something, if it's something that connects to prior knowledge, or if it brings along new knowledge but helps us see where the knowledge is, what the knowledge is based upon, all of these ideas even though what we're doing doesn't seem like, because it sounds like when you look at Mayer, the first thing you think about is PowerPoint or slides. Yes, that, that's true. But now even we're doing something which is, if you think about it, is it really multimedia, Steve? There's only, there's only one thing here going on. It's called sound. Yes, but what I would argue with what we're trying to do here is to paint pictures in your mind with the sounds. And so therefore it is multimedia. And then if we put multimedia sounds in here that do not resonate with the story, that violates his principle of redundancy. If we don't have the sound come in at the same time as the storyline would have the sound come in, hello, does that sound like one of his principles about temporal contiguity? Yeah. The next thing we're going to play with is, again, I know I, I say this a lot, but really, folks, uh, this one of the reasons why I love this class, it's full of chock full of stuff that you can turn around and use with kids. And now that you know the power of it and how to do it well with kids, it really, I think, has some interesting stuff to tell us. The next thing we're going to look at is the Google Tour. Uh, Google Tour, again, is... This is, we're back to being mayor here, and you'll see it. I think this, again, is one of the best things you can show kids how to do. And since it's a part of the Google, uh, it's also a part of the waffle that's up there when you're looking at stuff inside the Google Classroom. So it just, this one fits really, really well. As always, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, where are we? What are we doing, Steve? Do not hesitate to throw me a text at 502-457-2937. If you're having trouble with any of this stuff working inside the browser that maybe your school uses, or maybe, um, as you probably have realized, I'm a Chrome user. Um, although when I first started firing this up, uh, since I have the latest, greatest new Mac OS now running on my machine, I had to jump through some hoops to get it to work. Uh, I'm going to say that you may have to jump through some hoops if you're a Firefox user on a PC. Please, please, please stay away from Edge. If, you, if you've got a Windows 10 machine, just put Chrome on there. Um, you'll be a much happier person. Okay, that's it. As always, you know how to reach me. I look forward to hearing from you, and I really look forward to hear what these amazing stories are going to be like.